Well, it looks like we still got some vacuums out here on the back porch. So, back here, most of these have cut cords. We have a Eureka Boss Power Plus with a cut cord. We have a Hoover Elite Max Capacity with a cut cord. Although the cord's still attached, it's just the plug is chopped off. We've got a Hoover Encore Supreme, which presumably has a bad switch. Haven't worked on that one yet. Got a Dirt Devil Featherlight. Great condition. Had all the attachments with it, but also has a cut cord, unfortunately. Two Bissell Power Force Helixes in either color. 2190 models with cut cords. We have a Bissell Power Groom Multicyclonic, which does work. And I did refurbish it a while ago, but the motor just runs a bit loud because the bearings are going bad in it. But it is functional. It's also missing the brush roll. So, if anyone wants that, I'll be more than happy to sell that, just because I haven't really worked on the motor too much. We have a Hoover Air cordless, which I actually love these things, but this one's missing the battery, it's clogged, and it's missing the brush roll. So, we've got a Bissell Steam Mop Deluxe, haven't tested that yet. Got a Shark cordless vac, does work pretty well, just missing the bottom battery cover. We have a Hoover wind tunnel of some kind that is, obviously it's the Home Depot edition, and it is missing most of the machine. It does have the cord though, but the power switch is busted, which probably explains why it's half of a vacuum. This is exactly how I got it. We've got some various Kirby parts, and a sharp brush roll, a few other parts. Miss Lane has got a box of Kirby stuff, which includes some materials and a VHS tape. So, if anyone's interested in that, let me know, and I may list that for sale. Got two Bissells, got a Powerlifter Swivel Pet, and another Power Force Helix. Both do have cords, but have had the motors get shot in them. Uh, these are ones where kids were spilling stuff on the vacuums, and it was getting inside the motor and killing the motor. This one has a bad motor. This one, I believe, just has a bad switch. We have the Hoover Elite Cyclonic Wind Tunnel Canister, which just is having some issues with the power head, but otherwise works. We've got a Hoover Floor Mate that requires a lower hose. Hoover Soft and Light that also apparently has a bad switch. At some point I'll work on both of those Hoovers because I do want this to work. I've always wanted one of these and it would be nice to get it working. And here we have a another Eureka Power Plus, which does work. It's just in need of a cleaning, and it's very gross, so I don't want to leave it inside before I go to fix it. I want it to stay out here, since it appears that some animal has defecated onto it, which is not ideal. There's also this random chair here that I got off the side of the road. Same thing with that TV that I believe is broken. And there's also some miscellaneous parts in here as well that have just been sitting outside because I don't know where else to put them. So now that we go into the house, we can see the other aspect of my collection. Starting with the laundry room, we can see there's a Shark Steam Mop here that I'm trying to sell, haven't sold it yet. Um, two machines that were out on the back porch is now in here. Got the Dirt Devil Platinum Force and the Bissell Power Force Bagless Turbo. So both these do work, just in need of a cleaning. The Bissell um, has a little bit of a motor problem where it sounds a little bit more roarish than they usually do, perhaps due to the amount of dust that has likely gone through the motor. Hopefully a good clean of the motor, oiling, and maybe even a polishing of the commutator should hopefully remedy that problem. We have another Hoover a Hoover Wind Tunnel Purely Clean T-Series. This is one that I am keeping, which is why I haven't bothered to fix it yet, but it's um, it's one where, or at least I was deciding to keep it before I got the Rewinds, the uh, Elite Rewinds solar styles, but this one does have the headlight, which is making me possibly consider keeping it. The point is, is that just needs a cleaning. Cleaning hasn't been done yet. Dyson DC07 on floors. Decent condition. It was just missing the side duck piece but otherwise works just fine 
I haven't really looked into the clutch too much. The clutch seems okay. It's clearly um, not in the best condition. It could use a replacing, but it does have some life left in it. It's not horribly bad. The brush does still spin correctly without any major issues. We got the Hoover Steam Vac back here. Just haven't worked on it yet. Haven't even tested it yet. It might work just fine, but I'm keeping it. So Hoover Wind Tunnel Supreme, older style with the dirt sensor that's digital. Since I have the other wind tunnel that you'll see later on, I'm probably going to sell this one. I don't think I'm going to keep it, but it's entirely possible that I do keep it. But if I get a good enough offer on it, I'll probably sell it. So yeah, we have the Shark Apex. 0M, uh, or not 0M, this isn't a 0M, but it is a dual clean, but it's not a 0M. It does appear to work, just had a clog in it. Um, needs a little bit of a cleaning, but very minuscule of cleaning. It's overall in decent shape, but I haven't looked at that in quite a while, so there may be something else wrong with it that I'm not sure of. Dirt Devil Ultra Vision Turbo. Again, works perfectly fine, no issues with it. It doesn't need a new headlight, but obviously that's not, you know, that's not a deal breaker because obviously it works just fine without the headlight. Needs a bit of a cleaning, but otherwise still picks up just fine, sounds fine, nothing really wrong with it. Again, I've been kind of keeping it, but I'm not too attached to it, so I may entertain an offer on that if it's a good enough offer. Um, many of these machines will likely be reviewed before they're sold. So, if you would like to buy them, uh, let me know. But, once I get beyond, once I get beyond this room, when I get into my actual room, none of those machines are for sale. But the ones that are out here, with some exceptions, are for sale. So, we've got this Pistol Power Force. This is the one that I fixed that had the bad cord on it. First vacuum I put a new cord on. And you can see it also has the orange height adjusting mechanism that I put from the previous Power Force Helix that I had in there. And uh, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably, I'm trying to sell this, but not having good luck selling it, so I may just give up and keep it and just throw it in the back of my car and just have it be a, just a vacuum that I carry around and just use, and if it breaks, who cares? Um, Bissell Clean View Deluxe Rewind. So this is vacuum I got pretty recently. Um, got it for 60 bucks, you can tell it's brand new um but there's no unboxing of it because it was open box so has all the attachments although the extension one and crevice tool aren't the correct ones but they do fit kind of we've got this little eureka stick vac again not really attached to that that's trying to be sold dyson dc15 all floors trying to sell this on offer up Nobody seems to want it, or at least if they do, they want me to just straight up give it to them. And obviously I'm not doing that because I refurbished this thing and it works perfectly now. So I'm not going to, I'll be entertaining reasonable offers on this. Um, this $13.98 I'm probably going to keep, but I'm not quite sure. Again, if I get a good enough offer for it, I may. And by good enough, to tell you the truth, if someone pays me more than this thing is worth, then I'll probably sell it. If someone's giving me what it is worth or less, I won't. And I fully realize that's probably not fair, but, you know, I'm not really all that concerned with getting rid of it. I will likely just probably give it to a friend and have it be their vacuum um, instead of one of these newer ones. But, um, I don't know. It all depends. There, there, last I checked, there was one person selling refurbished ones of these on eBay, but he was charging $60 for them, plus 30 bucks shipping, and 100 bucks is just not... A good deal for these considering you can get the sanitaire and big green versions of these for around that same price if you look in the right places we've got this Bissell power force 6579-3 carcass that um, doesn't have a motor or cord or screws in it it's just a bunch of plastic pieces so if anyone needs parts from one of these let me know I may be able to sell a part or two off of it or probably just most of it uh, this phantom fury 10 amp I am selling I just haven't gotten around a listing mainly because I haven't yet found a good box for it because uh, these phantoms are shaped really weird and it's hard to find a good box to pack them in. Again, if anyone knows where I can get good quality boxes to ship vacuums in, you know, stuff like the 15 and like the Fury, they're really hard to ship because they're just so weirdly shaped and bulky. 
But if anyone knows where I can get boxes for those, then yeah. Then these two machines... I mean, this one I'm kind of selling. I mean, I am selling it, but nobody seems to be interested in it. So, uh, this old school Hoover runabout from the 80s. It's obviously like an old vintage machine. Works just fine, other than this little outer back being ripped a little bit. But it works. I just haven't gotten around to, well, selling it. This is mine. This isn't going anywhere. But it's just out here because the motor in it's still bad. The 6594. Uh, the blue variant still has a bad motor in it. So you can tell it looks brand new, but it's just... Still has a bad motor in it, so it doesn't run at all. So I tried replacing the switch in it, didn't do anything, still won't run. And of course, this is your quick up again, selling that. This dust buster appears to need a battery, um, so not much to say about that. And now we go from the dark depths of everything, go into the living room real quick, and we can see that my two. Uh, cordless machines if I can find the stupid switch for this lamp see over here is the Hoover Lynx Hoover Lynx been using this absolutely love it good machine um, got it for only 100 bucks at Walmart uh, now that same Walmart is selling these machines for only $64 which is a steal because on Amazon these things are still 200 so it is an absolute steal these are excellent machines and for that price, if you can somehow find one at that price, definitely jump on it. But Dyson V7 Animal Plus, again, works perfectly. No issues with that. Got the dock right here. No complaints. It works really good. Haven't had to wash the filters yet, but I guess I haven't really checked. I don't like how weird that is to pull that out. The filter looks okay. I probably should wash it because I've heard some collectors say that these filters will look clean, but it'll still be really dirty. So, maybe I should go ahead and clean that. But, it's getting dark. Dark, 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 dark. Let's turn this light on. Oh, also, in this closet, you can see there's the DC-33. So, there's the DC-33 multi-floor. I believe it has a bad clutch, but I'm not quite sure. It may be good. I might, I'm probably going to sell this at some point because I... It's so similar to the 14. I don't really see the point in keeping it too much. It's still a fine machine, but, you know, it is what it is. So that's the 33 Multi-4. It does have the attachments. Just not sure if I'm going to bother keeping it. But in the meantime, this is where it sits. So I may end up just letting my dad keep this since he really wants a Dyson. But we'll see about that. So... Now we go into here, you can see it's the stuff that I'm working on, because obviously this is where I go to clean everything up. Got a couple Power Force Compacts, we have a, a 2112 and a 1520 that have just been in the process of being refurbished. You can see one of them's torn apart, this is one that didn't have a cord on it, so I'm going to put a cord on that at some point. Honestly, not sure if I should even bother, if I should just chuck the thing, but um, if anyone needs parts from one of these, let me know. And got a Power Force Helix. This one, uh, well, it is uh, one that I had fixed, and I just need to give it a little bit of a wipe down, and it's good to go. I already have it listed for only twenty bucks. So, um, but that's locally. If you want me to ship it to you, it'll cost more, obviously. But um, yeah, people don't seem to be as interested in these older helixes as I thought. But still got that. I just already sold the other one. And I also already sold the Helix Turbo. So anything you don't see in this video, I've already sold. If I don't mention it, at least. So yeah. Now that we're out of that, we can go into my room and see the vacuums that await. So my room's still a little bit cluttered, as you can see. Um, we have this Dirt Devil that I still haven't opened up yet. Got the Shark Apex. My Phantom Lightning is still there. I'm still trying to sell this Lightning because I got scammed out of a return on that on eBay, so that seller that sold me that, I forgot who it was, but they're just awful, but um, it is kind of working now, so I'm trying to sell it, the powerhead's a little bit finicky, but otherwise it works just fine, so I'm trying to sell it, I've had multiple people say they're going to buy it, and then back out, which is really, really uh, infuriating, and incredibly disrespectful, but whatever, so now we can see, got Abyssal 3-in-1 over here, 
Powerforce Bagless, 6583, Clean V2 Plus, Dirt Devil MVP. Um, this MVP and the wind tunnel back there need to be cleaned, but they're not too bad, which is why they're already here. Got the Power Track Revolution. Got that recall Dirt Devil. Um, here's that Bissell 3 in 1. You can tell I'm kind of starting to step over stuff. This is a Hoover that I was fixing for a couple friends. I just brought it in here. It just needs just needs a belt and a cleaning. Shark Navigator lift away that the handle broke on. I do not recommend Crucial Vacuum at all because I bought a brand new handle for another lift away I was selling, and I had to can of, I had to rip off the handle off this one in order to make the customer happy because the one the brand new one that I installed on her vacuum broke. And I'm extremely infuriated with Crucial Vacuum because I had to cannibalize a shark that otherwise had all the original parts. And I was very happy to have one that had all the original parts and didn't have any aftermarket parts. And now uh, Shark wants to charge me $50 for a replacement handle, which is infuriating because, well, that's how much these things go for, uh, at least in the used market. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Vacuum works fine. Um, I've had some negative opinions on this lift away and a lot of these shark vacuums in the past, but as time goes on, I've come to like these vacuums more and more, especially this particular one. This particular one, I think I've made two different reviews on these that were both relatively negative in tone, but I've kind of changed on these. I do really like these machines now. They're not perfect, but neither is anything these days. And... Frankly, for the machine, for the money, I should say, these machines are really excellent for the price. And yes, while Shark's OEM parts are indeed overpriced, like I just mentioned, the fact that this is a 10-year-old machine means that you can find parts for it. So the previous complaint, at least when it comes to this machine in particular, I don't know about their new Vertex and newer machines they just released, but at least for older platforms like this, the complaint about there not being available parts is kind of a moot point because there are available parts. Uh, both from Shark directly and from third parties. So I'm happy that Shark has gotten not nearly as bad as they used to be with parts availability, which means that the number one complaint about this machine has pretty much been resolved. And I view it rather favorably now. It's still not perfect. I don't like how narrow it is. I don't like how on my carpet that's out of the living room, it's so thick this vacuum cannot stand up on its own because of how narrow it is. I don't like that. But besides that, most people aren't going to have those issues. Most people don't have carpet that's as fluffy as mine is, so that's probably not an issue. But um, yeah, my view on these has really changed, and perhaps I should do an updated review on them. And I'd also like to do a review of the new Shark Vertex, but I don't have one, so I can't exactly review it just yet. So, here's that Dirt Devil Breeze that I had. Again, I salvaged the attachments off that other Breeze, so it is indeed complete with all the attachments. And it works beautifully. I have had really no complaints with it. It's still not as clean as I would want it to be. It's still not perfect looking. Um, I still haven't figured out how to get this stupid base off. I don't like how, you know, the, the newer Breeze that I like about it is it just has the two screws on either side. You can pull the base right off. Uh, just like all these Bissels. So, it's one thing I don't like about the older Breeze. But, performance of it has been pretty good, minus the fact that it eats through belts in traditional Dirt Devil fashion. This one doesn't appear to have that problem. This one, I'm pretty sure, has the original belt on it. Um, or at the very least, it's the belt does work good. So, And this one also doesn't have any of the attachments other than the crevice tool. Here's the 6583-F. There's my Silverglide MVP, which I still have not worked on. It still has no belt on it, and um, it's still not in the best condition, but it is there, I just haven't worked on it yet. Here we have my Phantom Twister, which has been working pretty decently. I used it a little bit, and it's very, very nice to use. And that little filter issue with it is unfortunate because it is a decent machine. Is it worthy of the Phantom name? Eh. Some people would argue that the original Phantoms weren't all that great to begin with. And I know us Phantom collectors probably don't see it that way, but... Objectively speaking, I think that these newer Phantoms don't deserve a lot of the hate that they get. Sure, they're not nearly as good as the Iona Phantoms, but, you know, they're basically, you know, the predecessors to the Sharks, and the Sharks are decent machines, so, you know, I kind of did a little, you know, I, I taped the filter cover on 
with some packing tape and it's been working just fine. Here's my power lifter bag pet. Nothing much to say about that. Still been working just fine. Also my power force turbo rewind pet. Also been working fine. So here's the new Dirt Devil Breeze. Haven't even used it yet. So, you can see that. Obviously, um, I bought a handle on eBay for it. And I went to return the handle. And eBay charged me almost $40 for the return. Which was not... It, it did not say that whenever I went to do the return. Which is annoying because the handle was only $20. So I literally paid like $15 to extra to return the handle, meaning that I lost an extra $15 that I wouldn't have lost if I had just bought the handle and threw the old one in the trash. So that's frustrating. But um, nevertheless, haven't used this yet at all. And, you know, um, not much to say about that. A lot of people don't like that compared to the older Breeze. I think it's okay, at least based off the ones that I've used in the past. And of course, we have the Dirt Devil Total Pet. That's the one that got recalled. I still have it. Don't know what to do with it. And, uh, yeah. Here's a Power Force Helix Turbo Rewind. I got this for free. Um, I went to go buy this around my birthday, and uh, some random person at Walmart just bought it for me. Uh, for not really any necessary reason, so I don't really want to get rid of it. Um, my dad really likes the color green, so if I don't give him a Dyson, I'll probably give him this machine. And as you can see, I haven't used it at all, because obviously I have the pet variant, which, honestly, the turbo brush on the non-rewind is much better, but I like the color scheme more on this, so this is the one I've been using out of the two. And, yeah... Here's the 6594-W, working just fine, no issues with that. Haven't been using that all that too much. The Clean V2 Plus I've been using a lot more often, as you can tell by the cord being kind of disarrayed on that. Um, but yeah, so if we move that out of the way after I hurt my finger. We've got the Power Track Revolution. We've got the Wind Tunnel and the DC-14 Low Reach. Again, all the attachments, no issues with that. Got the CleanView 9595A. I went to go return this because I wanted to purchase another one because the base plate on this one cracked. You can see. You can see that. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that. And I'm about to drop this thing on my Phantom. But either way, the base plate's cracked on it. So, trying to. Uh, get another one, but they discontinued this, so I'll just have to source Bissell for a replacement bottom plate, and the vacuum works great. It is honestly probably my favorite out of all the clean views. Yes, um, you heard that right. This is probably my favorite out of every every vacuum that bears the clean view name, at least, you know, based on how easy it's been to use. It's been reliable. Um, it hasn't had any real issues with durability or anything. Obviously, I have the other variant now that's the higher-end variant, um, but that one has an 8-amp motor. This is the last one with the 12-amp motor, meaning that now um, the only... I keep saying um. Normally, I don't say um, but for some reason in this video, I'm saying um, probably because I'm not used to doing collection videos, but the uh, Power Groom bagless, I believe, is the only Bissell that you can still buy brand new that has a 12-amp motor. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that this one and that one was the last one. And I assume the power groom is going to discontinue before this did, but apparently not. This got discontinued beforehand, and I can't find it anywhere. At least not, you know, otherwise finding it used. But new, I can't find it anywhere. And I really want to find the turquoise version, but the turquoise version has been off the market for a few years now. So, it is what it is. Bissell Big Green Commercial and the Sanitaire variant. Nothing much to say about these. The Sanitaire I've hardly used. And the Big Green, I used to use it as my daily driver. haven't really used it all that much, mainly just because it's hard to get back here and grab it. My Shark Navigator Zero M works great. I wanted to find another one, but uh, literally right when I was about to go buy one, I was about to buy one with my next paycheck. Um, but it turns out that the blue one is now discontinued, and every store that had the blue one now is only 
carrying the red one, which I don't like. I like the blue one a lot better. And all the blue ones I saw were like a shinier, darker metallic blue than this one. This one's like a lighter blue, but good enough. But I still really like this machine. Um, I like the not hair tangles, but you can tell I've been using it too much. I used it as a canister for a while when I was, uh, you know, when I was fixing other vacuums. And now I have an actual shop vac, which is still sitting in my car. Here's my 10 amp copper, not 10 amp, my 12 amp copper Fury. Uh, just yesterday, I got the pet hair tool adapter with an extra pet hair tool. That cost me a hefty 20 bucks, but there you go. So this is really hard to see, obviously, because it's all black. But you can see that I now have the pet hair tool adapter and a spare pet hair tool. So this thing is completely complete with all four attachments, including the add-on attachment. And this is my favorite Phantom in my collection. Um, it really deserves to be up on that pedestal next to my Power Glide as my favorite vacuums because I do. This is my favorite Phantom, and this is the, my favorite version of the Phantom. So those two, the Power Glide Platinum and this Copper Fury, are the two shining points in my collection. The vacuums that I like the most, because uh, people keep asking me, what, "What's your favorite vacuum out of your collection?" It's the the Copper Fury and the Power Glide Platinum. Those two are my favorite. They're pretty much tied. So. Moving the big green back behind, we can see how many freaking vacuums there are. Now, I'm probably just going to have to get a flashlight so that way I can just, you know, properly light uh, all of the vacuums that you cannot see. If I can find the phone that I was using for a flashlight, which is over here. I'm going to try to not trip over these vacuums and fall. So, we can see, once this gets unlocked, there we go, we can see uh, all these vacuums. So hopefully I won't have to pull all these out again. So, going all the way back in that corner is the original Power Glide. In front of it, we have the Kenmore Destiny Plus. Then next to it, we have the Power Force 3522-5. Then we have the Eureka Airspeed 1. Then the Auric XL2 Ultra. Then the aforementioned Power Groom Bagless. The Dyson DC-18 Slim All Fours. The DC-07 Low Reach. The Power Force Bagless or Power Force Helix Turbo. The Dyson Light Ball. 12 amp Phantom Fury, Bissell Power Glide Platinum. We've got the Eureka Whirlwind that I got recently. And we have two Hoover Elite Rewinds. We have a red one and a blue one. Why two? No, I don't know. Why not? So, yeah. So that is pretty much my entire vacuum collection. Hopefully you're able to see all that. Um, I've, I've talked about all these machines before. There's not really much else to say about these. As you can tell, I did finally get the correct handle for the low reach. So, that is lovely. So, oh yeah, and then there's that little Oric hand vac. And I keep kicking these vacuums by accident. So yeah, you can tell I have a pretty large and, you know, unwieldy collection. Unwieldy? Unwieldy? Is that a word? Unwieldy collection. So, yeah, I think I already meant, yep, I already mentioned all these pretty much. So, yeah, that's about it. Just put some of these vacuums back here so you can see the whole collection. Yeah. And again, I think I showed off that wind tunnel, didn't I? Maybe I'll pull out the flashlight again so you can see that. There's the wind tunnel, power track, revolution, blah, blah, blah. So many other vacuums. Just vacuums, vacuums, and more vacuums. So many vacuums. Too many vacuums, in fact. But, um, yeah, lots of vacuums. So, <laughs> anyways. This goes back here. And uh, if anyone has any requests for reviews of any of these, uh, it'll be a pain to get the ones that are out of the back. I know someone requested the Auric, but like, come on, that's just too much. 
But um, some of these I will get reviewed, and some of these I will eventually get rid of. But not much to say about that for now. But uh, yeah. So that is my official vacuum collection. Again, these are all the ones that I'm not selling, um, as well as that 6594 and a couple others that I, that I already mentioned. So, this is this is basically my actual collection, so to speak. This, this is my actual collection, and then the other ones are just ones I haven't fixed yet. So, anyways, this is Intelltech Studio signing out, and this is probably a lengthy video, but, um, yeah, and the fact that I'm still getting more vacuums while also trying to get rid of these is a scary thought. So I really need to get a bigger house or a storage unit or both or I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe I need to duct tape some of these to the ceiling. Maybe that would be a good idea. So anyways, this is Intelltech Studio signing out with my entire vacuum collection as of... Oh, my watch isn't working. As of October 9th, I think, 2020. So, yeah. That is crazy. Anyway, guys, this is Intelltech Studio signing out. Let me know what you think of these vacuums, etc. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Peace. Ugh, so many vacuums.